How's it going, everybody? My name is Will, and my wife Tiffany is on the camera, and we are aboard our 1999 Sea Ray 480 sedan bridge that we have lived on for just shy of three years. Um, we figured that that's pretty much enough time to get used to it before we decided to do a video boat tour. So without further ado, here we are. I am sitting at the command station up here on the flybridge where we've got our helm, steering wheel, shifter controls, and our throttle controls. In addition, we have our joysticks for the bow and stern thrusters, throttle control, VHF radio, got all the, the gauges and um, engine panels here. This here is uh, JL Audio, Radio Multimedia 50. This is sort of like, um, I don't know, like uh, an alarm system where you can kind of monitor your systems to see if you've got a bilge pump going, there's some craziness going on in your engines or your, uh, your generator or your high water alarm. We've got, this is a Simrat Go 12X or Go X12 or something like that, which, <laughs> hey look, the, the letters, they're all there. What order they go in, doesn't matter. I really like the clean look of, you know, not having any knobs, but what I've come to find out is that whenever you're underway in some big seas and you wanna, you know, change and adjust and you're <laughs> bucking the bull, it'd be much easier to have like knobs and they even have like external knob system where you can like maybe control it without reaching too far. But um, yeah, it's kind of a thing that I learned along the way. We've got our binoculars and other storage. This is where you control the, uh, the helm AC, which is located right under there. And it blows out of a vent here as well as located over there by the cockpit seating. So we've got a JL Audio sound system in here, speakers throughout. come forward, you'll notice some sweet see-through eyes and glass that you can see through without any issues whatsoever. We unfortunately didn't have the benefit of being able to see through our eyes and glass for the majority of the time that we owned the boat. But here we are in the present and it's beautiful. We've got our cat here modeling the, uh, the forward seating up here on the flybridge. This table actually lowers. There's an extra leg where you can lower this and this is the cushion to turn this into the bed and we spent lots and lots of time up here. We've even, you know, fallen asleep and have had guests who slept up here overnight. Um, it's a great spot to be. In this little storage area, we kind of keep our uh, cleaning supplies. On this side, we have our ice maker. Got our sink here trash chute and of course under the seating there's uh, you know tons of storage where we keep life jackets and other sort of boat supplies so this here's our roof hatch you could actually you know open that to let in some more ventilation and this is also access to get on top of the hard top where we have our solar panels we have 1400 watts of solar as well as a couple other electronic systems up there. Um, I have a, a separate video where we we'll talk more about the solar system that we have. This is a door that you know closes so that you can have this area being closed so that it is safe for you know the cats to kind of walk around while we are underway. The stairs leading down to the cockpit, they make it, you know, they're really convenient compared to a boat where you just have a ladder system where you have to walk down backwards and whatnot. You know, the stairs, they have grab rails for you to go down. 
And this was one of the features that we really liked about the boat. Show them how you come down. It doesn't even need the grab rails. Welcome to the cockpit. <laughs> this is like one of the best features I think of this boat. We were really excited for having a cockpit area and we used it a lot. Um, we have the deck chairs that we sit out on, especially when we were in the mooring field. And it was a nice open area. We could sit back here. Um, it has a lot of nice storage too. So underneath of these seats is a full length storage compartment that we keep, we've kept our um, boat poles, our washing, pressure washer, or all of that jazz down there. Um, here is the, the, oh, what did we have before? Here is the bait well, right, correct? I don't know. We used it uh, as- This is uh, the fish box. Fish box. We used it mostly, mostly as storage. It does have water running to it with drains. Right now it just has our dinghy chalks in it. And then this is the bait well, right? Yeah. Again, haven't used it as a bait well. <laughs> mostly for storage, extra lines and gadgets in here that we use often. Um, what else is in the cockpit? We have LED lighting underneath, which we have to be blue to kind of match the lighting we have kind of that comes from the ceiling, which is blue or white. Other compartments, we've used this little area for what we call boat towels, just dirty towels that we can use to wipe, uh, clean up stains or, you know, they're not, I guess they're not always dirty towels. <laughs> we make them dirty towels. Tell them all about the towel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously the door, the sliding door that goes in and out. Um, another st other storage compartments on both sides under here. We haven't really used them much. Um, we had the tanks, we have had dive tanks that we've kept here. We just, since we're at this marina, we don't dive our boat here. The water's dirty. <laughs> Uh, here we have our grill. We've used it in this setting with inside of the um, rod holder or we've ha it has little legs that we've just set it up here and used it as well. And um, again, the dock chair storage back behind it, which we keep our little um, propane for the grill back there. More storage under the stairs. This is where we've kept our tools in the past. We've since remove them because we're working on a project that's not on the boat. Um, there's some tools back there still. Another control breaker panel here. Um, did we use this? I guess it's for the cable master and a couple of other pumps. Um, usually like we don't turn anything on and off, but whenever you know a breaker blows, this is another panel that you have, that to, you have to check. Um, yeah, this is mainly for 12 volt systems. Yeah. So then we have our battery switches here. So we actually installed these once we kind of rerouted, rewired our batteries to work the way we want to, where we can isolate both engines or the house or have them run off of each other if we need to in an emergency. And we have our fuel switch um, valves, I guess, on and off of where you can pull your fuel from so we could actually have it pulling from both tanks, which is what we usually have, or you could pull from one tank if, if one was lower than another. It's also where you turn your generator fuel switch on and off as well. What do you think? What do you think? Um, and we put these handles on them that are perco. They lock since we had important tools and stuff in here. We wanted to have locking, uh, locking latches. This is how you get to the swim platform. Swim platform has another large, uh, we call it the trunk. The trunk area, which has another, more locking latches, gas struts, and storage for lines and fenders in here. Um, we, we also will store like extra components for the electrical system for shore power. This is where you 
can control the bait well pump and this is also where you can connect your water line directly for a pressurized water. Um, what we typically do is actually just fill our water tank and you know have the water pumps pump in the water when we're when we turn the faucets on and off. It's a debating, debatable topic, I guess, of safety of not having water pr constantly coming into your boat. Um, we've also found that in Florida with the, the heat that comes and hits your hose lines going in, it, it builds algae, which is kind of gross and it makes your water all green and gross. So what we do is just fill the tank and then when it gets about one fourth empty, we fill it again just to make sure we're keeping fresh water in here. No algae. And one other thing that we used a lot when we were in the mooring field, the little outdoor shower station. What do you call this? So just the foot Sorry, rinse, I guess. I think it's an outdoor shower. <laughs> <laughs> so we used it to wash our gear and ourselves while we were hanging out on the swim platform instead of tracking all the way through the boat to get into the shower that way. So uh, a little light switch to where you can turn on those LED lights that I was talking Fancy about. Lighting, yeah. platform as you all as some of you may know that in its uh, previous state it was a hydraulic swim platform which we converted to be a fixed platform one less problem you know it seems like a lot of people like their hydraulic platforms which we thought we would too so we realized there was more problems than it was worth and um, an inflatable dinghy it's pretty easy to lift on and off and yeah I mean I mean you can have a fifty thousand dollar lift to put your four thousand dollar boat in the water if you really like but if not then uh you can just go fix the way that we did and not have to worry about all the maintenance involved in it because there's no shortage of maintenance yeah it had a lot of corrosion and a lot of issues from the time it was manufactured to 20 years later so we'll leave it at that um uh the engine compartment the engine hatch we forgot to talk about that's where will spends most of his time <laughs> So again, gas strut assisted there. And it's a mess right now because we have- uh, Turbo? Tu <laughs> we have- Turbo? <laughs> we have turbos just hanging around. Turbos. <laughs> um, so this is, I mean, we're kind of, we're young. So we just jump down, but we do assist ourselves with using the, um, the waste tank, I guess, the waste holding tank to, uh, to get up and down. I guess we'll do an engine tour when it's like, engine room tour when it's not a mess, when the engines aren't torn apart. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give them a quick peek or maybe I'll put a photo over it. You know, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the bow. So we've spent, I guess, a couple of times up here. I mainly really like to, to lay up here to get catch some rays, or sometimes we watch the sunset depending on where it's set. Um, so we we actually made these cushions for the bow. So they're three-piece cushions um, to where you can fold them up and easily stow them away. So we have them so that you can prop up the backs of them in three different positions. One, two, and three. And then lay them down all the way. We just use this handy dandy little paracord so that when you're underway with uh, more wind, they don't fall completely. This is, this is a heavier piece because it has the back part to it. So um, both of them do the same thing. You can lay them all the way down flat. We have the handrail, the um, drink coasters on both sides and um, what else is up here the hatch that goes down to the forward stateroom there of course the windlass and the anchor um, the anchor storage locker and the anchor foot pedals for 
putting the anchor in and out. This is the windshield cover. <laughs> um, it's just a black kind of mesh material. It does help cut out some of the, the sun that comes into the salon. As you'll see when we get in the inside, we also have like a reflectix on the other side of the glass that helps with sun glare as well. Uh, above that is the spotlight that's controlled from the helm. And up, up there, I guess you can see it a little bit better, are the solar panels, um, the loud speaker, I guess that is, and uh, radar, anchor light, all of that jazz, all that good stuff. I think that's all up here. The cats love it up here. This is Turbo's favorite spot. So this is uh, pretty much where you come into the um, salon area and I'll just start showing you what we have here. There used to be a bunch of old outdated electronics here um, that looked kind of ugly so we just put up this board with uh, so we can have our honey-do list here so whenever you come onto the boat and there's nothing written on the board then that's how you know it's going to be a good day but we've got key storage randoms in there we put this tv here there used to be an older one but we put this um, smart tv here and back behind here we just have uh, kind of like book storage miscellaneous hammocks i wish we did this much sooner because we watched several tv series on an ipad so um, here we've got our control panel Pretty much everything on the boat. As you can see, we have 240 volt systems, 120 volt systems, 12 volt systems, and it doesn't show it, but there are several 24 volt systems on this boat. So we have it all for better or worse. This is our uh, alcohol cabinet. It's a pretty poor display right now but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that here shortly. Just got our junk bin here. Everybody has one of those. And this is like a mini pantry for us over here. This here is the um, AC controller. The air conditioning blows out of this vent this is our Magnum remote, so this can pretty much controls our inverter. This is a switch that controls the salon seating to have it go up and down. And this is the um, solar controller panel. And you all know right back. <laughs> so uh, yeah, as I was saying, this seating section here, this folds down to become a bed and we've spent many nights camped out up here whenever it was a little too wavy to um, sleep in our room since our state room is in the bow. There is a little pull-out drawer under here. And there's also storage under here, but um, our inverter is pretty much located under there. You could put other things there, but we don't have anything there. Okay, so we're in the galley, and um, in the galley we have the fridge and freezer. You want me to open them up for them? They're about the same size. Um, we have the sub-zero freezer and fridge, and we found that it's enough space for us living full-time aboard. What else do we have? So we have a three-burner electric cooktop as well. Um, I use I use it occasionally but as you can see we have the ninja foodie that i got this year as a present and i've pretty much become addicted to it so i use this mostly for cooking um, we've also done a plug-in electric skillet 
to have just a bigger area. I find that on this little three burner, you can only really use smaller pots or smaller pans, but um, it does heat up well and, and it cooks fine if that's, if that's how you prefer to do your cooking. So in our cabinets, this is just how we've used them, but you can use them however you want. We have cups storage up here and it goes all the way through so you can access the other side as well. We use this little part for our spice rack and it works pretty well. And, you know, we can put random things up here on the counter. This actually slides out. We don't, we've never used it, I don't think, <laughs> except for measuring or cutting larger, larger objects, but rarely use that. Um, these we just use as our, you know, galley storage for silverware, and I pulled it out too far. And random, you know, kitchen objects that you would have. Plenty of space. We even have a little junk drawer. Bonus junk drawer. <laughs> too many junk drawers now that we now that I'm saying this out loud. <laughs> and um, so we use this area for for plates and bowls. I think when we got it there was like a coffee maker that could slide in and out. But and here, just more storage really. We've used um, this for wine glass storage and we've not gone wood. We've never broken a glass, so it Apparently we packed it tight enough that it that went underway. It hasn't had any issues. Um, galley lights here. We do have a little vent for the cooktop and another galley light, um, some electrical outlets so I can plug in my foodie right there. More storage in here. As you can see, that, that's how they kind of, all of the drawers slide in like that. We just use this for Tupperware and toaster and longer, longer objects. Um, we have a convection microwave oven, so it can microwave, it can bake, I think it can grill and do other things. Pretty good size in here. And um, we did have to replace ours, but, we, but we've liked it so far. And again, these drawers come out so that you can hide it away and um, lock all of these before you go underway, as I've learned. <laughs> Uh, what else? So we keep our dish rack up here, you know, the soap dispensers and extra pots and, pots and pans. They, we do have this cover for the sink to extend your countertop, which is nice. I never use it, but it's here if you want it. <laughs> this is a little trash chute, so the trash receptacle is right under here. And we use this for just storage of cat food and cleaning supplies and that you can access the trash can through here as well. So this is our dinette area. Uh, so we actually spend a lot of time here being on laptops or eating, obviously. And um, we found that it works pretty well. We've had guests over. We can fit four here comfortably. And this flooring is um, marine vinyl planks and it's from Nautique flooring. That's the, that's the manufacturer and they're on, they're in Florida brand, I think, right? The east coast of Florida. Okay. Yeah. And um, we wish we did this like as soon as we bought the boat. <laughs> it is a little pricey, but it's so worth it. Uh, it's much better than the carpet we had here. And they were pretty easy to, to snap in place and cut the form. And so we love them. They're very durable. We've dropped stuff on it and the cats claws, nothing has really affected it so far. So we recommend. <laughs> um, as you can see, we kind of just have like the trim and some carpeting here. The cats, this was their little scratch pad. So we just replaced this carpeting. And um, also we've placed these covers on all of our seating when we moved on the boat because we have cats and we know they don't intentionally, <laughs> intentionally claw but it just is what just what happens. It's just how they grip and they accidentally claw. So this is like really fine leather that we found and it's, it's very soft, very nice, but very easy to scratch. So um, we can put clips, maybe uh, pictures of the, what the vinyl looks like, but for the most part, this has helped protect it with a couple of imperfections still. And um, we did it on the backs, the backing as well. So here we have our treasure chest <laughs> with treasure inside. 
otherwise known as GoPros and other <laughs> tech objects in here. So this is where we kind of, this was actually used at our wedding for like our cards and, and we've repurposed it to be our tech drawer. So, and of course with Rum Haven being our boat, it's appropriate. Other than that, the cats actually like to sleep up here um, when it's not too hot. So as you can see, we put these Reflectix windshield coverings in to minimize the heat coming in. We do have a, an outside, um, what do you call it, cover on the windshield, Black, it's black. And it does cut down some, but as soon as we put these up here, we notice at least like a three to five degree difference on really hot days. So especially in the mooring field, it was definitely a necessity. <laughs> so, um, speaking of shading, I guess, and lighting, we have the day and night shades that we also put in here as soon as we got the boat. And they're really nice. You can do the top section to just let in some light. You can do the bottom section if you want a complete blackout feel. Um, or you could lift them up completely to have your view outside. So these, win these windows open here, one more on the galley side, and those are the only windows in the salon that open, so something to note. Uh, what else? Lighting, since we're talking about windows, all of our lights we had switched to be LED when we moved on the boat, and um, above you can see we have our fishing rod storage, which is a unique place to put fishing rods, but everybody seems to really like it when they come on board. <laughs> so, um, am I forgetting anything? I think that's all. Oh, underneath of here, it's probably not the safest thing to do, but we mounted a, a just a strip for um, a power strip. And so we plug in our chargers here and we can use them above the table pretty easily. Um, there's not a whole lot of storage really with un within these seats. There's these two drawers here that are, and they're pretty deep. So we just use them for plastic bags or reusable shopping bags and napkin storage and that sort of a thing. This actually doesn't have storage underneath of it. Um, it's the head, I think it's the head space down in the, the room down below. So, but we haven't found that we needed it. We needed extra storage. I guess on some of the later models of the sedan bridges, this this piece here pulls out and it is deep. You may have seen it in some of our previous videos when we yeah. pulled a different model and we were really excited about that. But that was something that they uh, introduced after our year model. Right. So, but that's all right because there's no shortage of storage otherwise. Also. Right, there's plenty of storage. Yeah, that's the dinette area. <laughs> Welcome to the port stateroom. <laughs> We've had family come and stay and say it was comfortable sleeping in here. And uh, the bed, I don't know, what is it, a queen size bed? It's probably a little bigger in certain certain dimensions. I think it's a queen, this one's queen in our room, so it's, you know, like a, it's like an Olympic queen. Oh, okay. So, um, so it's a little dark back here. There are two reading lamps on this side, on both sides, but we've never, we've never had them work and we've never felt the need to chase down why they're not working. The light bulbs trick didn't work. <laughs> so, um, what else besides the bed? Uh, we put in another one of the flat screen smart TVs in here for replace the old boob tube is what we called it. <laughs> that was in here before. There's some storage up here where the, these two portholes open and um, the other storage is the closet right here which we use all of our closets. This happens to be our shoe closet <laughs> and extra. We clear it out if we have people coming. But there's a couple of drawers in here, not extremely deep. Another one down here. But what's really nice is the under bed storage, which I don't really know what's under here right now. It's probably not pretty. But um, so we have extra carpeting actually under there right now. 
but it goes deep. It goes all the way back. We actually have extra propellers back there and a couple other extra boat parts. This is where we kept like our dive gear and heavier gear that we didn't use every day, but wanted to have on the boat and inside the boat still. Um, we also used this storage, dry bilge. We used it mostly for cat food. <laughs> There's also dive weights that we put in here too. Um, this door that's here actually goes into the, goes into the um, head the guest head, I guess you would call it. We never use this entrance. Um, we mainly just use the other entrance. And as you can tell, this is, this is the head that we use for the cats for their water bowl and litter pan. So I guess since I was talking about the head, we can just go there next. So this is the guest head. Um, we actually put this little latch here to, and we pretty much keep this open so the cats can go in and out for the litter pan. The litter pan we have in the shower area, uh, the boat does have two full heads, so two showers and two head toilets, um, medicine cabinets which are plenty big with storage we used for medicine storage and towel, extra towel storage. Sometimes we put sheets in there as well. There's even under sink storage as well. This is where we keep our little bin for toilet paper. Um, it's a vacuum flush system. It has this little bench seating that comes down and creates a bigger area for if you were to put clothes here to get ready after the shower. Uh, that's the door that leads back into the fourth state room and this is the shower area that as you can tell we're using for the cat pan. <laughs> In the hallway we actually have another really big uh, uh, bilge area I guess. It has our sump box in it where all of the showers and all of the gray water um, sinks all, everything drains in here the AC condense condensation drains in here and has a bilge pump that goes overboard we obviously use it also for larger object storage like the vacuum and the broom that sort of a thing this stateroom has more it's well as you can tell we use it as storage but it does have an L-shaped um, arrangement for a bed if you had smaller kids maybe. It's a little dark back there. Again, the extra the reading lights don't work, <laughs> but it works great as storage. And this actually slides out a little bit if you want to use it as a bed. It, it gets a little bit wider. We have the curtains, the same porthole setups as that room does. A little extra storage in here that we used for like iron and random objects that you don't need every day. Um, it does have a washer dryer in this room. It's a combined unit, kind of like the Euro style units. Um, we've never used it. <laughs> we just feel, we've used one in the past and it takes forever to do one load. It's so such a small load. It uses a lot of water and energy, so we just don't. We, everywhere we've been with El Marina, we've just used their laundry facilities or a laundromat if we need it to. So um, again, there's some more under ground storage or build another dry build here. For, like we have a little heater fan for the winter or we could put a larger fan for the summer down there. Oh, I guess I didn't talk about these drawers here. So in this room is where I keep my clothing. So these three drawers pull out. That one, um, this one's actually fixed. Oh, wait, I could have been using this all along. <laughs> I don't exactly know what's on there. It looks a little dirty, but I probably could have used that for something in there. 
Um, this is actually the central vacuum system hookup, I believe. Clearly, we've never used that. We just used our little vacuum that gets the job done. And then in here is another closet with a very large like hanging locker. So this is where I keep my clothing. Um, I still go into the office for work, so I have to have dress clothes. So it's nice to have a hanging locker there. And we just put little shelving to make use of the floor space area as well. So this here is our stateroom. Um, like I said, it's like an Olympic sized queen at its widest point, but it kind of, you know, tapers in, goes wide, and then it goes in at the head space, and the same thing uh, at the foot of the bed. We have an escape hatch that also lets in light. When we were in Key West, we pretty much had this open almost all the time. Um, you think, well, what do you do whenever it rains? Well, you just close it. Usually whenever, I mean, the rain will wake you up and you know, we just kind of race to see who can close it the fastest. But we have this blackout shade here. Um, there's also a screen that comes from the other side to keep bugs out. We never used the screen, mostly because we didn't know it was there at the time, but we didn't have any, we really didn't have any bug issues there. Um, as you can see, we have another another 24 inch flat screen smart TV that is not plugged in. <laughs> so this here is it's my hanging closet, if you will. Pretty decent, decent size. I also have like the stackable hangers that way you, know, you make the the most use out of the space and i just use this for all my foldables i don't know why i took the camera from you you can have it back and this here is just um, a single pull out drawer under here, there's a um, like a Bose subwoofer we don't use. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, under our bed is where the air conditioning is located. You could also store some things here. We don't, but you can. And the back side of the bed also flips up for more storage. Kind of hard to access. More dry build storage that we keep our laundry uh, and other supplies down here. And then here, this is our head, We've got our laundry bin. more storage in here also below pretty decent amount of storage uh, shower over here another vacuum flush head system more storage for towels and such We hope you enjoyed this video tour of our now former floating home. We have a tour of our camper conversion coming soon, so if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss it. See ya!